Hello there, this is Yanis with episode number 11 of the Arcweave Basic Tutorial Series. In the previous episode, we created our first variable to store the information of whether the player has the key or not. More than that, we learned how to set the variable from the initial state of false to true when the player discovers the key. Now we are ready to use Arcweave's branches to give the player different outcomes according to the variable's value. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video and every video of the basic tutorial series. To create a branch, we can either right-click and choose Create Branch or drag the branch icon into the board. This is it. I'll just delete one and we have just one. So here's our branch. It already has an if statement waiting to be filled in. An if statement basically checks whether what follows the word if, this condition here, is true or false. So we can type if has key equals true. Now, don't confuse uh, the single equal sign with the double one. Remember that in computers, a single equal sign means value assignment. In other words, a variable gets a new value, just like as in here. Has key becomes true. This is a new value for the variable has key. On the other hand, the double equal sign means comparison. We check whether two things are equal or not. So here we need the double sign. Another way to write this in ArcScript is if has key is true. And Arcweave also understands this. But since has key is a boolean and it only takes the values true or false, we can actually completely omit the last part and leave it there, if has key. If the variable is true, then the whole condition is true, and the if statement fires. Okay, let's move on and connect this branch to the element called examine mirrors having the key. So if we have the key, we go here. Now we need to create an else condition so we right click inside the branch and choose add else. And we want to connect the else condition to the examine mirrors first time. Okay, else we have here if we have the key, this happens, else this happens. Okay, we can actually move them around a little bit so they don't... Um, <laughs> Anyway, it's all right. Now make sure that both outcomes give the option to return to the main bathroom element. And by the way, when we examine the mirrors, we want to go to the branch now and not straight to the first time element. So this is what happens. We reach the bathroom and we choose to examine the mirrors. Now there is this value check here the, of the variable has key. And if we have the key, we end up here and then have the option to go back. If we don't have the key, we end up here and we see this hiding place of the key and we have the option to examine the mirrors and go here and find the key and then go back to the bathroom. Excellent. So let's run this. Uh, let's run it from the beginning. So we go to the bathroom. We examine the mirrors. We examine the corner above the door. We find the key, go back, 
Let's examine the mirrors again, and we have no more the option to examine the corner above the door. We can go back to the bathroom. Good. Now we need to get back to the kitchen and set another branch that checks whether the player has the key or not. If the player has the key, we want an extra choice to appear. Okay, uh, by the way, I can add the kitchen drawer here. So now we need to get back to the kitchen and set another branch that checks whether the player has the key. If the player has the key, we want an extra choice to appear. Unlock the drawer. If the player doesn't have the key, we don't want the choice to appear at all. So let's make a new element. So we find the diamond ring there. And for this we need the branch that oops the branch that checks if the player has the key. So if if we have the key we can open the drawer. Does this make sense? So we go to the kitchen and we can search the cabinets anytime. And when we search the cabinets, there is this drawer that seems to be locked. If we don't have the key, this doesn't fire at all, so we can only go back. If we do have the key, this passes the check and we have this extra choice, unlock the drawer. And once we click on that, we get inside the drawer and find the ring. Okay, and then we can go back to the kitchen. Or searching cabinets, whatever you want. But there's no point in searching the cabinets anymore, so I'll just take us back to the kitchen here. So let's have a look at that, let's play this. We go to the kitchen, search the cabinets, and there's nothing we can do, so we go back go back to the living room, go to the bathroom, find the key, examine the mirrors, examine the corner above the door, find the key, yes, so now we have the key, go back to the living room, go to the kitchen, now search the cabinets, and we have this extra option of unlocking the drawer, and this is what we do, we get the ring. Of course, we haven't set a variable for the ring just yet, but we'll do that in a while. Great! Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we actually used the branches slightly differently in the two cases. In the bathroom case, we have a label that leads to a branch, and then the branch splits to an if and an else, which means it covers all possible cases. So the same label always applies, but the connection sends the player to a different outcome each time according to the variable's value. On the other hand, in the kitchen, if we don't satisfy this if condition, we don't even get to see the choice. We don't see this label at all. Even if I put the label before the if. And run this. I get the same result. Go to the kitchen, search the cabinets, I still don't see it. So it doesn't have to do with where we put the label before or after the branch. It has to do with having a branch that connects only if a condition is satisfied. Otherwise, it does nothing, and no choice appears to the player. It's up to you. Think of what you want your player to experience, and create your branches accordingly. 
So this is it for this episode. We have our first branches of logic in our game. We will speak more of branches in the next episode. We'll see how else if statements work and offer a couple of different logic variants that we can play with. If you're finding these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing to Arqueave's official YouTube channel. You can also follow Arqueave on Twitter and Facebook. Let the games begin. Thank you so much for watching. We'll speak very, very soon.